Hey guys, um, this is Barcode9588. Um, I've always been kind of a lurker on YouTube. I never thought about making my own videos, but I just bought a very pretty, beautiful Logitech uh, Quick Cam Fusion for about 150% below retail price, so I'm just taking advantage of that. Um, basically, what you managed to stumble across is going to be an introductory video on a very, very long, extensive, comprehensive series on the Myers Brig. I'm going to go into what exactly that means later. But um, basically why I started doing this, well, I just turned 19 about a month ago. Um, I started getting really, really interested in the Myers-Briggs system when I was about 16, so I, was in, I think it was in the 10th or 11th grade. And I didn't do it just because I was a total nerd keener, okay? Although I was a huge nerd. Um, but basically I started out of frustration because I have a lot of difficulty with people. I'm very socially awkward. Um, and just to throw it out there, you may not know what this means yet. Um, but my personality type is INTP, and what that means is that I'm introverted, intuitive thinker, perceiver, with my dominant axes being aligned on introverted thinking. Um, again, in layman's terms, simplifying it, it means I suck with people. I find people so bizarre and so irrational sometimes. And basically, I just one day I just got really, really pissed off and said, you know what? Um, let's try to understand them mathematically. So I started getting interested in this system so that I could categorize people and thereby be able to know how to deal with them, pretty much. I know that sounds kind of stupid to all you feeler types out there, but um, it makes sense for me. And again, um, this is just a hobby. It's an interest of mine. Um, I'm actually doing a double major right now at the University of British Columbia in chemistry and computer science. Um, very archetypal INTP majors, but I'll get into that later. And basically how this, these, the rest of these videos is going to be structured. I'm just going to go over that right now. Um, today is going to be the introductory, so I'm gonna, I've explained sort of the layout of the rest of the videos. And then nearing the end of the video, I'm going to go into a bit of history. I'm not going to go into any typing today. Um, but basically what will follow today's video is maybe about three, or five, three to five videos on the theory. Now most people think that the Myers Big Break is really just four letters with 16 concordant permutations. And while that is true, that is really just the tip of the iceberg. There is a lot more theory, generally a lot of theory. And I mean, I spent about um, last week, you know, surfing around on YouTube because people have been posting up their, um, their permutations or their personality types. And, there's a lot of diversity, but there's also a lot of overgeneralization and a lot of really simplification. You know, and if that's what you're looking for, you know, if you're looking just to know what type you are, then you might want to skip the next few episodes and then skip right to the end. Or I'm going to spend maybe an episode or two um, going extensively into every single one of the 16 types. Um, but the approach that I recommend you take really is to approach learning Myers Briggs like you would approach learning calculus. Now, when you're doing calculus, um, you could go through and try to memorize every single problem, every situation that you could encounter. Um, you know, all power to you. You could do that, but personally, I think that's kind of stupid. Um, the smarter way would probably just be to work from the ground up, work for the framework, learn all the theories so that you know you'd be able to handle any possible situation, any personality type that come that you stumble across. And basically that's what this is going to be. You know, I'm going to explain, I'm going to go into detail about the primary axes, the secondary axes, the tertiary axes, the role of the auxiliary processes on the roles of the shadow functions. Um, I've gotten all this from literature. You know, I camp out of my local library for like two years, about every day after school. Um, well, library, it's, you know, I read, li I read like an INTP, truckloads at a time, right? But um, you know, if you're interested, um, probably I'm gonna, probably going to dedicate maybe half of my last video, which is very far away, mind you. But but just introducing some literature and um, some of the online articles that I found. But um, yeah. So basically, right now I'm just going to go into the history. Um, the Myers Briggs personality type inventory was basically created by two women, Isabel Myers and her mother, Catherine Briggs. Um, they were, they've been interested um, in the writings of Carl Jung for about 16 years. Um, now, Carl Jung, he's just this, you know, this old guy, um, but he's very well known for being, a, first and foremost, a psychologist, and an extension to that, a sort of philosopher. Um, but the thing is that um, the problem that occurs with Carl Jung is that he wasn't a very accessible guy. He was a very, he was a scholar. He was an academic. And um, you know, all he wrote all his manuscripts, all his research in these huge tomes of like books. I mean, I've seen them; they're huge. They're not exactly you know bedtime light reading. Furthermore, they're all in German, so I probably would kind of understand it anyways. But yeah, it was heavy crap. Like it was heavy stuff. 
was a lot of heavy theory that you wouldn't want to go sifting through. Um, but probably the biggest problem with Carl Jung's orientation was that he focused on um, psychological pathology in relation to psychological type. Um, it, basically, to simplify that, it means that he only cared about psychological type as long as it was in people who were having um, issues with um, basically mental pathology. You know, for example, like schizophrenia or what have you, other mental illnesses. Um, so that wasn't very applicable. And um, what Isabel Myers and um, her mom, Catherine Briggs, did was that they said, okay, well, let's take the writings of this guy, Young, and sort of, um, you know, simplify it and then furthermore make it applicable to the common person. Um, so you don't need to be, um, you don't need to be, uh, have any sort of psychopathology to have it apply to you. Um, why they started doing this was really, it was basically sort of a socioeconomic transition theory more than anything. Um, at that time when Isabel Mars and Catherine Briggs were looking, um, checking this out, um, World War II was, you know, happening. Um, um, and basically what happens obviously with the world wars is that you know the men were being drafted into the military which left a lot of open positions in the industrial um, workforce and what happens is that the women obviously started coming out of the households you know defying gender roles and entering the industrial workforce and um, see but the main problem was that is you know because of gender roles because of these long-standing gender roles these women you know they've never they've never they don't know how to drive you know they don't know how to work machinery they don't know any of this stuff so basically, um, Myers and Brave designed the system to help these women transition. Um, they decided, you know, hey, if we could categorize them, if we can cre create this sort of um, framework of personality types, we can maybe possibly figure out um, or help these women transition into jobs that they already may already have the intrinsic um, um, skill sets or personalities or enjoyments to handle, pretty much. That's basically what it was. Just of course, this is again simplifying, but you know it's YouTube. You guys might be pretty bored by names and dates and so forth. Um, but the thing that really struck me most about the Myers break is that neither Myers nor Brake, you know, they were they had no formal education in any sort of psychological theory whatsoever. You know, they were just two ladies who were very interested in the writings of Carl Jung, and um, I mean, they probably that was the biggest reason why it didn't take flight right away. I mean. They, they came up with this system and they, of course, they presented it in front of a psychological community and they were completely shut down. I mean, you know, they had no training and they had no, they just, they had no credentials, basically. Um, so they were, again, shut down. Um, Catherine Briggs, who was Isabel, My um, Isabel Meyer's mother, um, she's, it, there was, there was, she was very fortunate to have spent a year, um, I think, I can't remember, but, um, yeah, she spent a year apprenticing um, to this man named Howard uh, Edward Hay, who was a um, <clears throat> manager at a bank in Philadelphia. And um, while she was under his apprenticeship for about a year, she sort of gained the skill set, what is necessary basically for psychometrics, human metrics. Um, she learned how to uh, collect statistics. She learned what um, you know, Validata was. And um, that sort of, sort of supplied her with the, um, the skill set necessary to develop a Myers-Briggs system a very sort of objective system, which basically what all statistics are. And um, it was basically where it came about, and you know, it just started taking flight and taking flight. And then now, um, it's just some modern applications of the Myers Brig, you know, human resources, huge in human resources. Um, you know, they, they found a lot of human resources and a lot of big companies use this to type their employees. And are, I don't know why they do it, I'm not quite sure, but maybe to, you know, um, sort of maybe help compatibility in the workforce or in the office or what have you. But definitely there are a lot of applications to the Mars break. Um, at the same time in the sort of scientific community, um, the Mars break does not have that much of a reputation. Um, it, has, it has a reputation for being a little, well, flaky, I guess you could say. Um, I personally don't find it flaky at all. I find it very, very methodical, very systematic. Um, but I guess where this sort of reputation for, for being flaky comes from, again, the fact that neither Myers nor Brick had any, any sort of training, any scientific training. Um, so yeah, that's basically just a brief history of the Myers Brick. And um, yeah, so if you're interested in the theory, I invite you to just, uh, maybe subscribe or stick around. 
um, because the next episode, the next few episodes, I'm going to be diving right into the theory. I'm going to be explaining what the difference between introversion and extroversion. You know, sensing and intuition, thinking and feeling, judging and perceiving, and how these affect the way, or the way these these are oriented affects how you deal with the out, outer and inner worlds, and a whole bunch of theory. I mean, this is just a really general summary. But yeah, um, please stick around, and um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to message me at any time. Although if the messages get to be a little bit overwhelming. Um, I, may be, I may just, you know, choose a few really good ones and then answer them here. Um, so yeah, Mars break. Um, please stick around, um, and I will see you guys around. I'll talk to you later.